today we're going to be discussing perception and the first path to initiation which is beginning to observe the internal processes that take place within the three centers the mental the emotional and the body when we begin to turn our attention from outer phenomenon and begin to turn the spotlight to the internal conditions that we can begin to interpret and experience the astral weather or the inner plane weather because the inner plane affects the outer plane and with wrong misconceptions we can perceive illusions from appearances and we turn the universe which is the divine mother into illusion if we see from our higher perceptions then we will only see truth and then we'll see the divine mother in her whole glory because then we won't have a mirrored reflection of something false this ancient Taoist practice called turning the light around is explained in a way of turning the spotlight of attention from the five senses or the external world and turning the spotlight so that you become aware of the central nervous system and the spinal column. Once you turn your perception around into the spinal column, you experience where it said Elohim floated above the waters. In Genesis, Elohim, the three primary forces of Kether, Chokma, and Bana manifest the eternal Christ and the Elohim, gods and goddesses. Within the human brain, on a microcosmic level, the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, as well as the energy center above the head. When the when Moses had to free the Israelites from bondage of Egypt, the Israelites are the various archetypes of the 12 zodiacal influxes of electromagnetic imprint. And these archetypes appear within us disorganized as they fall down through the top of the head and the energies influx and the archetype settle at the bottom of the spine so the inner Moses within us the liberator liberates these archetypes from the lower dentian or the lower cauldron and helps to free them as they cross into the promised land which is the heart chakra and above the kingdom the kingdom is in the brain so the top of the mountain is the brain because it's mounted on the highest point of the physical organism so when we begin to practice the fourth way that Jurdif taught which is a combination of the mental way the emotional way and the physical way of action then we're putting these three primary forces into action and we begin to perceive inner light when we first start the alchemical process and we look and turn our attention within not only do we find that it's extremely difficult to maintain this observance but also that there's a lot of inner darkness not only literally 
but also metaphorically because this light has been shining outside externally building the logical aspect of our being but in our current spiritual evolution it's time to turn the spotlight around and begin to perceive and witness the heart as we begin to perceive and witness the heart this is the true practice of activation of the third eye the third eye is the inner sense or the inner cognizance that allows you to see and perceive the truth in forms and you'll begin to see that the physical manifestation the visible form is the negative polarity of spirit The practice of turning the light around is simple because it's a moment-to-moment -moment practice. You can charge it up during meditation and while you're in meditation to make sure that your inner spotlight is turned backwards. Literally envision that your spotlight of outer consciousness, that you're inside of it and you're taking it by the hands and turning it around. Turn it around, and this will light up the middle column, the central nervous and the spinal system, which is where your spirit hovers above the waters, or where Christ walks upon the waters of life, which are found in the cerebral spinal system which is responsible for your I am awareness because the I am awareness floats or hovers upon the spinal fluid. Once you turn your perception to your heart, your center, your middle pillar, then initiation begins because what was once dark and unillumined, you begin to see light. And this is a good indication that you are waking up on the internal planes through this ancient practice. Turn the light around is also as simple as just putting your attention in the middle of your being in between your head and your heart so that you feel that you are functioning or an entity that is semi-translucently attached to the central nervous system of the physical organism. With these perceptions being practiced, you'll notice that you become more awake and more aware, and you'll be able to practice the self remembering. The ancient practices from the East, whether they be of Brahmic or Christian culture or Sufi all start with self-observation self-observation from a non-judgmental standpoint judge not lest ye be judged an allegory for being able to be observant of oneself and one's behaviors both mentally physically and astrally and be able to pinpoint and observe when one is acting out of line of one's true self and if you can catch these you can nip them in the bud and you can cut them off at their source there's a point <clears throat> where an astral image or thought or desire will try to creep into your bubble and at that very point if you're able to snip it before it enters into your conscious mind or your subconscious mind then you're able to alleviate yourself and continue to move on through the continuum so you become more aware for more elongated times and this becomes a fixed process in which your eye 
EYE, your third eye, or what's better to call your first eye, is able to stay on as it always has been, but now you're aware of it. Because first, the subconscious mind tried to take control, and it's aware and on at all times. That's one of the mystic codes of the all-seeing eye. The subconscious mind is always on and taking inputs even when the conscious mind is unaware. So this is what black magicians know and use against people. They can imprint their will onto someone else's subconscious mind and manipulate. But once you're aware of that, and your sun and moon are both activated, which means the perceptive subconscious and the active conscious are working on an in an integrated way, then you cease to become mechanical and start to wake up. <clears throat> because after you inherited the lower ego, sometime after the bliss of childhood, when the persona crept in, which is only a tool, but the conscious becomes compartmentalized and is in need of that I, the higher I, E-Y-E, to be able to have sustained observance over all three centers, the thoughts, the feelings, and the actions. If you can just stop within one of your routines and do some type of ritual or some type of just stop and watch what you're doing. If you're walking or with your family or taking care of errands, stop either physically and just watch yourself or just internally. Take a step back, observe your mind, your emotions and your physical aspects and notice the things that you don't wish to see about yourself because the whole point of the great work is to become conscious of impurities so that we can go after them one by one and slowly relinquish from them utilizing the three primary forces the pineal, the pituitary, and the higher energy center above the head when these become activated then the soul is able to incarnate and express itself more vividly and more aligned through the central nervous system in the three centers. And then your lower instinctual en um, energies and actions and behaviors automatically transmute into higher forms. <clears throat> so it brings us to the mysteries of Pisces as the astral part of us in the astral realm, or known as the inner plane, has a direct effect on our physical reality. And our actions, thoughts, and movement in the physical realm also has an impact on the astral. They're both affecting each other simultaneously. So if we continue to start at one point, a purifying our actions through devotion or karmic yoga, selfless service, being conscious of our thoughts and our feelings and our emotional reactions and our longings and imaginations. And if we can replace them and find places to break the routines, then we're able to enter into a higher state of being because as the inner Moses liberates the archetypes from the bondage of Egypt, from the Pharaoh who is reigning over all the energies and who is stilling all the energies that descend from Kether into the brain. These energies are dissipated through the externalization of your consciousness. Practicing turning the light around is working with the chakras in the head, 
of perception. And if we combine it with the inner smile, which is where we inner light up as if we're smiling with our face, but in our heart, our chest center, then we're utilizing Krishna Yoga. We're bringing our perception from the higher centers of the head that go outward, turning them inward into the central nervous system, and then practicing a light inner smile from the heart center. And in this way, we slowly purify and sizzle and vaporize the lower center into the higher centers. And that static energy becomes shin. And this is facilitated through the breath as well as the larynx because the in breath and the out breath, yod he vod he, is what facilitates the whole spectrum from the journey from the lower instinctual centers to the higher centers. That's why when you become still and you meditate and turn inward, you're shutting off some of the lower energy centers and the excess energy that was conserved is able to naturally travel upward through the breath, reaching the head Aries, the baptism of fire. And then it drops back down to the heart and becomes cooled down. with a different type of fire. You have cardinal fire in the head and more of a warming fire in the heart. The human body is a distillery system and if used correctly and naturally as the Creator intended, facilitates the birth of higher existential parts of our being. As we're in Earth now, we're in the womb and this womb is a gestation phase in the creation of the being. As the first part of Genesis says, and he made Adam and it was good. That part of Genesis is in process now. Not a part of history, but a, play, a process that's taking place within us now. Once we're completed. And in order to complete the great alchemical process, we have to go through and conquer the four beasts of Revelation, the four seasons. God has been granting us a very special lesson as we've lived from infant childhood, adolescent to adult, through the four seasons repeatedly. We learn that this is none other than a projection of the internal environment of the soul's progressive journey. <clears throat> and we conquer the four inner demons and pride, lust, anger, vanity. The four beasts of the apocalypse of Revelation. The seven chakras, the seven planets in which we get positive influences and negative influences are our raw energies to work with. And the twelve intelligences and the twelve archetypes are what we perfect and manifest so that you can be a fully manifest being with all twelve archetypes instilled all seven planets transmuted and become a king or queen of glory and meet the Christ or the Lord, the Eternal One, in His mansion. You become face to face with God as Jacob climbed the ladder of the central nervous system, which is only a microcosm of the grand ladder reaching from the physical plane to the higher inner planes. The higher you go, the inner you go. The inner world is seen in the sky. In the Srima Bhagavatam, it was referred to as the spiritual sky. But in order to exist consciously there, 
you need to have manufactured a soul, an astral body, and a celestial body here in the physical realm. <clears throat> this process happens naturally or automatically through nature's means, or it can happen consciously through self-effort, faith and works in God, and rising to the occasion through self-knowledge so that you can walk on the waters of life, cross the Red Sea, climb up Jacob's Ladder, they're utilizing the three primary forces, love, wisdom, and life. Life being Kether and beyond. The eternal. Because we already exist eternally and immortally and astrally. But on our way down, we lost those rememberings and memories. So now that we're encased in the physical realm, we have to work our way up. Now with the knowledge of good and evil, because we're not just cradled as we were in the infinite, we have to go through our wilderness. 40 days, 40 nights in the desert. Symbol of the four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. Fall being the soul's descent into the physical realm, winter being entombed in matter, summer rising, and then spring, or spring in Aries, activation of the head faculties, and then developing the heart in Leo. And then when we die physically, is our fall, as in our elder age, and then once we die is our winter. So go through the underworld and become conscious of all the unconscious aspects of ourself. And the inner Christ is what allows us to board his boat or the ark, Noah's ark, as we use it to cross through the underworld of winter. For it's be renewed and reborn in spring in the spiritual superior dimensions of life. And then to become mature spiritually in summer, reaching the celestial realms, which are the three spiritual realms above the seven astral realms. That based on our being and who we are, how we think, how we act, our intent, who we truly are, through the laws of correspondence, we will manifest in the appropriate Denzian or place or realm. <clears throat> 